I think I figured out my style of keto that has worked so well for me for the last nine or 10 years. Those of you that don't know me, uh, I've lost 100 pounds with keto. I lost 100 pounds in a little over a year, and I've been doing keto for nine or 10 years now. And I think I've now put it all together with why I've had so much success with the ketogenic diet, and it's because I'm doing what's called a Mediterranean keto diet. And I wanna share it with you. I wanna share what it's all about, and I wanna share how to do it, and also even some recipes and things like that, because I think it is the future of the ketogenic diet. Hey, I wanna let you know that I've got videos coming out all the time, so go ahead and hit that red subscribe button, and then hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications so you know whenever I go live. There's new videos almost every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. So here's the interesting thing. People bag on the ketogenic diet, okay? You see all the major media networks just coming down hard on the keto diet because saturated fat, red meat, dairy, this and that, okay? And then on the other side of the equation, you have a lot of people saying, oh, the Mediterranean diet is the way to go. The Mediterranean diet is how you live for a long time. There's much less instance of coronary artery disease, much less instance of inflammation, all this stuff with the Mediterranean diet. And people automatically think that Mediterranean diet just means a bunch of pasta and a bunch of pizza and just a bunch of good, tasty Italian food. But no, 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 Mediterranean is just all about the region, okay? Ketogenic dieting is more about the macros, Okay, so they're what we call perpendicular diets. So when we talk about this, I'll make some sense of it. I have a little graphic to show you too, but Mediterranean keto works well. They are very, very harmoniously linked together. Okay, so the perpendicular diet means keto is all about macros. Okay, keeping your fats high, keeping your protein moderate, and keeping your carbs low. Mediterranean doesn't mean high carb, low fat, low fat, it doesn't mean anything like that, right? All Mediterranean means is a region. So you can combine keto and Mediterranean and there's a really nice overlap. So the parts of the ketogenic diet that overlap with the Mediterranean diet are like the best possible foods for you. And I'm gonna break them all down. Okay, so Mediterranean diet, the reason it's so good and so successful is because the omega-3 profile is phenomenal. You're eating lots of fatty fish, you're eating lots of even small, good fish that doesn't have a lot of poison in them, ultimately not a lot of toxins that have accumulated. Okay, you're eating leaner meats, you're getting a wide variety of monounsaturated fats, you're getting good polyunsaturated fats, you're eating tons of olive oil, which in the keto world for some reason got demonized because olive oil isn't supposed to be cooked with. That's not the idea with olive oil, okay? It can be in some instances, but it denatures because it's fragile, because it's really good. You know what else is fragile? Fish oil. One of the most powerful, amazing oils on earth is very fragile. You shouldn't be cooking in fish oil, right? Just like you shouldn't be cooking in olive oil. You use it to get the benefits, and we'll talk about that. The foods that are also in the Mediterranean diet are exceptionally high in vitamin D. Okay, so you're getting fatty fish, you're getting the good cuts of meat, okay, you're getting the mushrooms, you're getting the olives, things like that. Vitamin D plays such a role in our genes, not just how our genes fit, because there's a strong link with belly fat there too, but our genes in terms of how our body actually expresses genetic activity and grows and proliferates with good healthy cells. Tons of produce on a Mediterranean diet. You can't deny that, okay? I know people like the carnivore diet and I understand, but there is a lot of bodies of evidence. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that fiber and produce is probably good for you. Okay, then keto. The benefits of keto, strongly anti-inflammatory, right? Okay, we get, of course, the beta-hydroxybutyrate is anti-inflammatory in and of itself. It inhibits nuclear factor kappa B, which is one of the main control towers for inflammation within our body, and it modulates that. Plus, it elevates reactive oxygen species scavenging. So it activates certain mechanisms in the body that scavenge free radicals, sort of like olive oil does. Olive oil has these amazing properties. Okay, much less dairy than traditional keto. Normal keto, especially in the US, heavy, heavy amounts of dairy, lots of cream, lots of half and half. Not saying it's all bad, it's okay. I've done videos on which dairy and cheeses are okay, and the right kind of cheeses are okay, even on Mediterranean keto. Uh, very high saturated fat in the US. Not saying that saturated fats are bad. I've done videos on that too. But when it's all saturated fats, you have a slow breakdown of these fats. You're not able to turn them into ketones as fast as you are with monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. So very important there. I can't overemphasize the benefits of olive oil enough, honestly, because olive oil is, when it comes down to the ketogenic diet, it converts into oleic acid. Oleic acid has huge properties in protecting our cellular membranes, okay? so. It actually stops reactive oxygen species from penetrating, penetrating our cells, meaning our cells are not having to fight 
just constant war, so they're able to actually do their job. But additionally, oleic acid converts into something known as OEA within the body, which completely just plummets your appetite. I've always wondered why when I eat keto Mediterranean, I have like no appetite. I eat a can of sardines and maybe a little avocado in the morning or something, and I just don't even feel like eating until 3 p.m. It is so wild, and now it makes sense. It's the OEA and all that stuff that's going on, because sometimes I'll add a little bit of olive oil along with my avocado and stuff like that. So let's talk about the overlap here. This is the big part of this video that we have to understand. And if you know these pieces, you'll know how to eat Mediterranean keto, okay? And if you guys like this video, I'll do a full keto Mediterranean meal plan video. Okay, so here's Mediterranean foods. Here's the overlap of Mediterranean and keto. And here's what I would consider just keto that doesn't fit in the Mediterranean overlap. So these are the only Mediterranean foods that I feel don't fit in the keto overlap. Whole grains, Okay, we're not gonna have pasta, we're not gonna have whole grains, we're not gonna have a bunch of legumes, okay? That's, that's Mediterranean, but not keto, I'll give it that. Then we'll have uh, fruits. Quite honestly, you can even have a small amount of fruits, right? Mediterranean is quite paleo, so we're kinda like trying to find, okay, what is keto paleo in a way? And then we have starchy veggies. Okay, lots of squash, lots of, lots of things like that. That's not gonna fit because the carbs are too high. Still, some of these are okay foods, some of them whole grains, legumes, eh. Okay, then I'm gonna go over here to the keto side. Okay, this is stuff that I would consider keto, but not quite Mediterranean. Heavy dairy, and that's not to say that people in the Mediterranean regions don't consume dairy, okay? I know they do, I'm not, I'm not completely being stupid here. I'm just saying that the dairy intake is significantly less, and if you look at all the studies, you look at the intake, they consume much less. They also don't consume low quality red meat. Okay, they consume high quality red meat, and a lot of it is because the European and the Mediterranean regions have significantly different standards on meat. Grass-fed, grass-finished. You're not consuming low quality stuff like you are getting high grain-fed, soy-fed garbage like you unfortunately are here in the States. And then we have uh, things like butter. Of course, used in moderation, you see a lot more ghee in the Mediterranean style than you do in butter, okay, traditional butter. And the butter that is there is good butter, and it's usually, again, held to higher standards. So now let's talk about the overlap. You can see much more food overlaps than doesn't overlap, okay? And I wanna touch a second on olive oil, because if you're going to do Mediterranean keto, obviously olive oil is gonna be a big piece of it. And if you get olive oil at the grocery store and things like that, chances are it's going to be oxidized. Olive oil is fragile, we have to remember that. Okay, so because it's fragile, if it sits on a grocery store shelf, it's going to break down and you're not going to get the reactive oxygen species fighting effects, okay? You're not going to get that. So because I'm doing this video and because I'm talking about this, if you wanna check out a really good olive oil, check out down in the description, the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. These guys honestly figured it out when it comes down to olive oil because they take it when it's peak harvest, bottle it, and then airship it to wherever it's going versus having to sit on a, on a container on a ship oxidizing. You need to use olive oil and you need to use it relatively quickly. So you wanna get it fresh and you wanna be using it liberally, use a lot of it. So special discounts, you can get olive oil literally for a dollar to try them out. So it's a super cool offer to be able to get it for a dollar. So that's why I'm including it here. So check them out down below in the description after you watch this video. Okay, they've really done it right and they're offering some cool stuff. So the overlap, obviously olives, olive oil. Talk about that, that's a huge thing. Seafood, okay, sardines, anchovies. It's important to uh, remember this acronym. Sardines, mackerel, anchovies, salmon, and herring, smash. That is the kind of seafood you wanna be eating. And guess what? All of them fit right in to the Mediterranean region. So sardines are one of the highest omega-3 content fish that you can eat, and they're small. So the DHA content is very high. The smaller and lower you go down the food chain, the higher the DHA content, which specifically feeds your brain, okay? Very good stuff. So you're eating a ton of seafood, right? You've got the olives and the olive oil. Not only are you getting the monounsaturated fats, which turn into ketones very fast, by the way, you're getting vitamin D out of it too. Avocado and avocado oil. Okay, so you use your olive oil to drizzle on food and you use your avocado oil to cook with because it has a higher smoke point. That works great. Okay, then you have your leafy greens. Obviously very, very keto and very, very Mediterranean. Artichoke, nothing screams Mediterranean more than artichoke. And it's one of the best prebiotic fibers that you could possibly get on a ketogenic diet. So it's a staple for me whether I'm medi keto or not. Then we have asparagus, another amazing prebiotic fiber. You're seeing the link here. It's all very gut health oriented, which the science is starting to prove that linking the gut and the brain, enteric nervous system, second brain, gut brain axis is very important. Okay, then we have broccoli and cauliflower. Hey, guess what? Italian, Mediterranean, 
cauliflower pizza crust. You can still do it all with a cauliflower pizza crust now. But broccoli, cauliflower, huge estrogen modulating properties with the diendole methane. So basically allows the liver to process estrogen more. Okay, spinach and zucchini, very good there. This is probably the biggest piece that makes sense with the Thomas DeLauer style of eating. Lean proteins and higher grade. I am a fan of eating leaner cuts of meat, and I know people hate on me for it, but it links with exactly my philosophy here. Eat leaner cuts of protein and get your fats in from sources you can control, like olive oil, avocados, macadamia nut oil. That way you're getting a wide variety of fats. Polyunsaturated is here, monounsaturated is here, this fatty acid profile here, this carbon chain here. I'm getting a plethora of different nutrients from a fat perspective and I'm keeping my protein lean. I'm not falling victim to whatever the weakest link might be within that protein that I'm consuming. If I consume a bunch of corn-fed beef from a cruddy source, I don't know the fatty acid profile I'm getting. I'm trusting some farmer that's basically an industrial farmer, not even a real farmer, right? It's, it's, I could go on forever. So that is huge. Almonds, okay? You don't wanna overdo the nuts, but almonds, Brazil nuts, pecans, macadamia, all fit within the Mediterranean style. Perfect, right? Chia and flax, moderation, okay? They are omega-3s, but they're not converted omega-3s. They're alpha linoleic acids. They don't convert into the full omega-3 fermentation process, but they're still solid. And then we got eggs. I mean, you, you've got your eggs, you can do so much. Okay, and if you focus on good quality eggs, you're getting the fatty acid profile from the yolk with the biotin, you've got a recipe for everything that you possibly need. And lastly, like I mentioned before, the combinations of the polyunsaturated fats and the monounsaturated fats. So if you have a second here, take a look at some of these recipes that my friend uh, Nicholas Norwitz came up with. I'm just gonna show them for like 20 seconds. So take a quick look. Okay, so we've got some simple things like utilizing some crab. We've got some things that are utilizing some asparagus just to show you the tasty things that you can have on a ketogenic diet. So how, how does this look? Like how do you piece this together? Okay, well let me just give you some simple examples here, right? Okay, for breakfast, you might have one egg and maybe two whole egg yolks, right? So one whole egg plus two egg yolks. Uh, maybe a couple slices of some avocado, a couple olives, Kalamata olives on them, and then you drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it. Perfect, tasty breakfast. If you wanted to have a little bit of bacon, if you have it from a good source, have a little bit of bacon on the side. It's all good. Okay, then lunch. Okay, yeah, maybe I feel like having a little bit of tuna. Maybe I feel like having a little bit of salmon. Take some salmon, drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it just so you get an even more rich fatty acid profile. Have a little bit of asparagus on the side and a little bit of avocado. It's so clean. Okay, and you can take your eggs, you can make your own mayonnaise. I digress. There is so much that you can do here. So Mediterranean keto, overlapping, what is working from a macronutrient and a science standpoint with what works from years and years of sort of epidemiological research. What works for people generation to generation and helps them live longer. Combine that with keto, fasting, you've got the perfect mix. And I'm telling you, definitely wanna check out the Fresh Press Olive Oil Club if you're trying to get the full spectrum of everything. So make sure you check them out down below in the description. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you guys very soon.